Hey folks, how's it going? All right, we're at day seven now. So hopefully some of this material has been valuable to you. Uh, what we're talking about today is how to increase student participation in an online environment and how to be present online. So we kind of gave an overview of this in our last episode. Today, what I want to do is go into a little bit more detail on what kind of software we can use and how to use it. So I'm a big fan of texting. I believe that this is a medium, a channel that our students respond to. And so personally, I use remind.com. Now, I'll put a link in the description below, but you can guess what it is. It's remind.com. I actually learned of this from my daughter when she was in high school. Many high schools use it, and I use it in my classroom. It's a service that allows people to send and receive texts without sharing their phone number with one another. So folks don't have my phone number, I don't have their phone number, and yet I can easily text an individual student or a group of students or an entire class and they in turn can text me and it all comes through my phone or through the computer. The really nice thing about texting is this is a channel that our students today respond to very well and I can point them in the right direction when I put more information in other places. So for example, if I post an announcement, unless they have their settings such that they get an email whenever I post an, an announcement, they may not know that I posted one. Furthermore, even if they do have that feature that they receive an email each time I do an announcement, they may not check their email. Many of our students don't check their email for two or three days, sometimes even longer. So by putting an announcement out there, sending an email, and sending a remind.com text, I can make sure my students have the right information at the right time so they can respond to it and everything will go swimmingly. Now, another piece of software that we can be using, and in fact, I should have talked about this when we were talking about our standard tech lectures, is Big Blue Button. Big Blue Button is built into, um, into Canvas, and it allows instructors to do both synchronous and in so recording these synchronous, asynchronous lectures. Once again, I should have included this in our standard tech uh, lecture or video, but as I said in our very first video, I'm running through these fast and furious. I'm going to make a few mistakes, and that's one of them. So I strongly recommend you become familiar with Big Blue Button. It allows you to do online lectures. Once again, I'm going to put a link in the description below on how to use Big Blue Button. The next thing I really encourage you to do is to include video feedback. So, of course, whenever we you know, respond to our students with feedback, we can go ahead and type the feedback. But we can also use Captura, that little blue V that I talked about, and we can actually give video feedback. So this is pretty rich and it's, it's a little bit more, well, it's quite a bit more personal than a quick note. And so students will feel a, a greater sense that you are present and engaged in the learning process. Now in all of these things, we want to make sure that we are communicating frequently. I mean, like every other day or so, you really want students to feel like you're in the classroom even though it's online and you're milling about and that they can expect to see and hear from you very frequently. One time I was at a conference and a fellow professor told us that she told her students, listen, Canvas is my Facebook. I'm in there all the time kind of checking things out and playing and leaving comments and posting things. I expect you to be in there participating. So by leading from the front, by being in there every day, every other day perhaps, and leaving posts and leaving feedback and leaving videos and, and just making comments and so forth, you're setting the expectations. 
students are not going to really feel this drive to be there more frequently than the professor. They'll kind of uh, gauge what we're doing and follow suit. Now, when it comes to posting things online, play with this. Have some fun. I mentioned memes. You can go ahead and pull memes. You can make your own memes. I'm going to put a link in the description below of a website that allows you to kind of make your own memes. It's a lot of fun. I do it. I enjoy it. And students respond to this quite a bit. You can also post uh, pictures that kind of reflect the topic of the day or the topic of the week. So, for example, pretty soon I will be talking about, um, I don't know, oh, conspicuous consumption with one of my classes. So I might go around to, well, the malls are closed, but I might find some pictures online of, of things that I feel kind of reflect or, or represent conspicuous consumption and post some funny versions of these. For example, one time I posted a picture of a car that was 100% diamond studded. Oh my gosh, conspicuous consumption at its most extreme. So the idea is don't just stick with words on a screen. Try some videos, try some pictures, try some audio. Be there in a more rich, more present, um, more personal fashion. And then finally, one thing I'm kind of toying with experimenting with is gamification. Sort of the aspects of games brought into the learning environment. So, for instance, I might have some sort of badge system whereby whenever I leave feedback for a student, I might create 10 badges and I'll give a student a badge, one that represents one aspect of an assignment. So, for example, I could possibly do a badge for good writing, a badge for great format, a badge for following the instructions to the letter, a badge for thinking outside the box, a badge for, you know, going the extra mile and doing more than was expected in the assignment, a badge for having fun with the assignment, a badge for providing me feedback. You get the idea. I might set up these badges and, of course, communicate to my students what I'm doing, and maybe I'll have some sort of system by which I'll give extra credit if students collect all 10 badges. Again, this is just something I thought of thanks to one of the uh, comments uh, provided in our previous video. So once again, let's play with these ideas together. Um, because of the comments and because of the ideas I'm getting from you, I'm able to kind of take it to the next level and then you can take it to the next level after that. Another professor after that, you get the idea. So let's share our ideas and let's be a part of the process. Okay, so there you are, some quick ideas for how to be present online and increase student engagement and participation in an online classroom. Let's keep doing this, guys. It's going to start up here pretty soon. Let's make it happen. All right, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later.